one of the things you must remember about people with large D's is they have a touch of paranoia. So the defense mechanism that they have is to deny that it bothers me that someone doesn't like me. Dr. Walker would not analyze a person who had paranoia in his handwriting. He'd hand it back to him because exactly what Beth described, this is a classic example of what, what we're trying to teach you. Beth, because anyone that you analyze that's got some, a touch of paranoia, what, what is that? It's the ultimate fear. It is the fear of not being loved and not being accepted. So anything you say, whether real or imagined in their mind, will of course be your fault, not theirs. So you have to be on the side of error with caution with those people. And, and you don't have to have that big of a D for them to react the way Beth was talking about them reacting. It, it hurts you if someone criticizes you or if you think they're criticizing you. Now, there's two parts to that. So you don't have to criticize someone with a bigger D. They will imagine, especially if they have other loops that complement or accelerate that trait, which would be the large Ys. Now, can you imagine what you see? What I see in a, when I look at that picture, I just, I, I just start hurting for her. Because can you imagine that every time someone looks at her, why are you looking at me that way? What happens to a paranoid person? Their whole world is that someone's going to hurt them or do something bad to them or attack them or criticize them, whatever happens in their imagination. In order to defend that, what is their shield? Well, that, that is, they, they develop, I don't care, attitude, but what they will do is hurt you first. They will, they will do something to hurt you sooner or later if you're in association with a person with a, with a touch, large touch of paranoia. They, they just, that's the way they function. I do not ever want to date one <laughs> again. <laughs> now, the large top ones, thank you, Barbara. This is paranoia. The other time, the other one he didn't draw is when he comes up and starts back down and doesn't. And I told a girl one time, I said, your, ex, your husband, soon to be ex-husband, is paranoia, is paranoid, and he will hurt you. She said he already has. He came into my house and cut up all my undergarments. I mean, just sliced them all to pieces, you see. It's an aggressiveness that's incomplete. It's incompleteness, and so it's a danger signal. Well, it, it's dangerous. Now, this is paranoia because it's bigger, which means it's enlarged, which means what? That they have a bigger amount of being sensitive to criticism or perceived criticism. If you're pretty normal, like most of us are, then we're sensitive. It doesn't disable us, we don't pull our sword and do battle every time somebody looks at us wrong, but we don't forget if they criticize us, 10 years later you can remember when someone criticized you. It's a small thing, if it's flat top, it's dangerous, it's really um, severe, so we look at it in different degrees, and most of the degrees, as you learned, if it's retraced on the bottom of the Ys, and you're almost antisocial, you don't let anyone in. It's different from a loner stroke, which means that you don't even need people and it doesn't bother you too much either way. If, it, if it's normal, then you have an adequate social life. If it gets bigger, then you become gullible. Or you, everything happens, every little thing you make a big deal out of, see? And the bigger it gets, the more gullible you are and the, the bigger deal. Well, here's the difference. In a, in a Y or G. Uh, mine are, I, I noticed back in the back I had signed a certificate, um, 1990 was it? And my Y's, I was, had some illnesses going on and they were very small, short. And then as I got normal again, 
they became normal, my normality. Uh, many of my wives and G's are straight down. And my writing is in the middle. I can be with people by myself, but I also have a loner stroke. I can be, I watch, if I'm watching the ball game, uh, Super Bowl, I'm by myself or somebody doesn't interfere with me too much. I want to see the game. See, I'm a, I don't need people. The difference is, and this is my description of this, I'm late today, and someone says, Kurt, what happened? I said, I had a flat. And, and I, <laughs> first flat I've had in 20 years, I had a flat. Uh, I drive an avalanche, and it took me three hours. I had to call my maintenance man to come get me. I didn't know how to change the flat because I couldn't find the tool to go in the back of the truck. <coughs> Wendy says, what happened? I said, I had a flat. I, you know, it didn't dawn on me till the next day. Now, people with a Y or G like this will say, I had a flat, and you won't believe what happened. I'm like, I was stuck three hours. I had to call my maintenance man, and here's what happened, and everybody stopped to look at me on the highway. Is, see? Every little deal is a big deal. And with my loner stroke, I said I had a flat. I didn't tell her I was on the road at three hours sitting there waiting on my maintenance man that he went into the ditch and we had to drag him out before he could help me because it had been raining for three days. He pulled over on the side. I didn't tell all that. I told her later. But see, it, it, it wasn't important for me to say anything except I had a flat. That's it. See the difference? How it manifests itself in your life. Now when you learn that, you see the picture of the personality and then you feel for that poor lady. Guilt is the worst emotion invented by man to control other people with. Well, yeah. the, the guilt, the guilt is basically seen in the, in this one, but a religious guilt would be a flat top H, you see, religious guilt, and that's what I was referring to when I just made my silly comment. Well, uh, I don't know if there's a lot of distinctions, Ken. Uh, when we, or when Dr. Walker, Dr. Walker was an amazing person. Uh, he studied all the different ones in the world and put together the ones that were 100% accurate, you see. Now, in order to teach, to be teachers, we have to isolate a trait, and then we have to name it, and then we have to describe it so that you can learn what it means. Now, when we go to the advanced level, which some of you are, and hopefully all of you will be one day, then you begin to put them all together. Now, Dr. Walker was amazing. I'd say, where do you see that? And he couldn't tell me. I had to go to Jane, his heifer, and say, where did he get that? <laughs> and that's, you remember that? Yeah. Because he didn't know where he got it. Because what he saw was the personality amazing about him. He would look at a personality five years later and say, I've looked at this before. You could bring me one five minutes later and I'd give you another analysis. <laughs> It was amazing that he would remember it because he didn't see the traits. And that's the very first step. Just learn the traits so you can put them all together and see the personality. And then you can feel what they feel. You see, when Dr. Walker analyzed me, I grabbed the paperback because I knew I, knew I didn't write all that crap. <laughs> now, where did he see this from? You know, it's amazing. 